Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Sukhdeep Basra, Dr. Carr, Dr. Jumian, and all the members of the Houston Shock Symposium Committee. Thank you for this opportunity to present this very interesting case of a mitral and tricuspid clip in a patient presenting with cardiogenic shock. So as Dr. Oren said, there's a, you know, in the interest of time, I'll get, get started. So this lady is a 53-year-old lady. She had non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, had an EF of less than 20%, was on tronic melanone therapy at 0.375 mics per kick per minute, had an ICD placed previously, hypertensive diabetic, and presented to clinic with hypotension and volume overload. She was noticed to have a blood pressure of 90 by 50, heart rate of 110s, satting 92%, and slightly tachypnic. Her exam was consistent with bilateral crackles. Uh, she had a systolic ejection murmur in the left lower sternal base and had elevated JVD. It was also cold and clammy on palpation. Her labs were significant for a sodium of 128, creatinine elevated at 1.6, much higher than her baseline, BNP of 27.25, and uh, elevated lactate at 4.2. So we took her for a right and left heart cath. Uh, thankfully, the left heart cath didn't show any new lesions. The right heart cath numbers were very interesting. So her RAP was up to 21. Her RV pressures were high, PA pressures were high at 63 by 21 by 38. Her wedge was elevated at a mean of 22, but look at the V wave. The V wave was up at 44 millimeters of mercury. Uh, FIC and cardiac output and index were consistent with cardiogenic shock. These are numbers on milrinone and levofed, and so it was 2.75 and 1.44 consistent with cardiogenic shock. Her cardiac power output was 0.39, which was pretty low, and then PAPI thankfully was not horrible, but it was 2.0. <coughs> So she got a transthoracic echocardiogram, which suggested that she had severe mitral and tricuspid regurgitation. We followed this up with the TEE to assess the anatomy and see what would be the next options. As you can see on the left side in the LVOT view, there's a tethered uh, posterior leaflet with severe uh, mitral regurgitation. There's an eccentric jet of MR extending posteriorly and hugging the entire left atrial uh, wall there. On the right side, <coughs> in the bicommissural view, So uh, this is a transgastric view. You can see on the left side that the mitral plane, um, there's basically severe MR from commissure to commissure. These are beautiful images by Dr. Nathan. On the right side, you can see severe LV dysfunction as well as RV dysfunction and a dilated heart. This is 3D assessment of the mitral valve. You can see the posterior leaflet is completely tethered, and there's this big coaptation defect in between where on the right side, you can see that's corresponding to the MR plane, and so it's going from commissure to commissure. This is a pulmonary vein Dopplers on this patient. So you can see on the left side, um, um, there's floor reversal in both the right upper and the right lower uh, pulmonary veins. And on the left side, you can see there is uh, floor reversal at least towards the end in one of the images on the left upper, and then also early floor reversal in the uh, left lower. This is uh, a left atrial pressure tracing on transeptal, and you can see the giant CV waves and very large V waves with the pressure of 44 millimeters of mercury that I was mentioning to you before. This is consistent with the severe MR that we've seen before. And here you can see, in addition to severe MR, there's also severe TR. And on the right side, you can see the LV is dilated, dysfunctional, and so is the RV. Look at the bowing of the interatrial septum from the, left, from the right to the left side. The jet of tricuspid regurgitation is directly hitting the septum and pushing it. This is just another picture of the tricuspid regurgitation. You can see it's basically encompassing the entire coaptation zone over there, hitting directly the right atrial, uh, interatrial septum. So the options for this patient at this point, obviously one was medical management, but clearly she had failed that at this point. She was already on levofed and melanone and not doing well in cardiogenic shock. Uh, PVAT support was something that could have been considered, but the question would be what would be the exit strategy in someone like this. Uh, advanced heart failure therapies, which would be LVAD and transplant, were obviously considered, and I'll get into that. The other options would be mitral valve replacement and rep or repair with possible tricuspid valve aneuploplasty. And somebody with an EF of less than 20%, dilated heart, a lot of comorbidities, uh, was, she was considered pretty high risk for any of these options. Other options would be mitral clip, or based on the recent results of the COAP trial, and then sometimes mitral plus tricuspid clip. So initially we discussed her and we presented her for consideration for LVAD or transplant. Uh, she was not considered a, a candidate because of lack of her care plan. She had poor insight into her disease and was 
non-compliant in the past, it was not considered a good candidate for Elvato transplant. So at this point, our options were basically left with either mitral clip or mitral plus tricuspid clip. I briefly want to go over the results of the COAP trial. Uh, this was a very uh, remarkable trial that was presented last year and basically randomized patients with severe MR with uh, functional MR in the setting of low EF who were symptomatic despite optimal guideline-directed medical therapy, despite uh, CRTD. And in 614 patients, randomized one is to one to CLIP plus medications versus just plain medications. The results, I think, frankly surprised all of us um, because just a month prior to this, there was another trial called the MITRIFR, which was completely negative. And so I think going into the meeting, all of us were in despair. But uh, this was an uplifting moment. Um, so you can see here, the graphs clearly separate right in the beginning. Uh, this is the primary effectiveness endpoint of all-cause hospitalizations uh, for heart failure. And you can see that the number needed to treat is three, and the hazard ratio is 0.53, which is pretty remarkable on top of CRTD, on top of all the guideline-directed medical therapy. And these are established centers with heart failure uh, uh, physicians who are doing everything possible to you know, stabilize these patients. So on top of that, GDMT, this is the improvement. All-cause mortality was also significantly improved. The NNT here was 5.9, and the hazard ratio was 0.62. So we were very excited with these results. We decided that the MitraClip may be the next best option for this patient, so we decided to proceed with MitraClip implantation. On the left image, you can see that we are putting the MitraClip and trying to just sneak in beneath the posterior leaflet, because it's a short leaflet and it's tethered there. And on the right image, you see on 3D that we are trying to identify the jet and seeing where's the best uh, location for the first mitral clip. Obviously, this jet extends from one commissure to, to the other commissure. Going into the case, we thought maybe we'll end up with more than one clip, but sometimes you get lucky. So this is the first clip on X-ray. And this is the residual MR after the first clip. So you can see there's still, I would say, at least two to three plus MR at this point. The jet, as you notice on the left images, is lateral to the clip, and the gradient across the mitral clip at this point was two millimeters of mercury, which was thankfully not too high, so we could consider doing a second clip. We debated a little bit and decided that should we leave a little pop off or should we just go ahead and put a second clip? We thought that with the amount of MR residual, this would be not helpful to her, so we decided to proceed with the second clip. As you can see on the images, the second clip is being positioned adjacent to the first clip, lateral to it, right where the jet was on the previous images. And so here now we are positioning and deploying the second clip, and you can see on floor on the right side, the second clip is adjacent to it. This is the transgastric view. This is a very nice picture which shows you the tissue bridge right in the center of the A to P to commissures, and also slightly lateral to that, which is where we were hoping to, um, to have a good grasp. This is on 3D assessment. Um, you can see those two little things right in the center uh, which is right where the first clip is, and the second clip is adjacent to that here. And right here on the 3D with color, you can see that that jet of MR, which was there before, is now down to this small little red right next to it. So a significant improvement in the mitral. And the gradient, thankfully, only went from two millimeters to three millimeters. We thought this was a very acceptable result for a mitral clip at this point. And if you remember the tracings of the left atrial uh, tracings from transeptal before, the V waves were 44. And at this point, they were down to 16, which was remarkably improved. So we were calling this a success. We decided to reevaluate the tricuspid um, because based on the current situation, um, you know, I, ideally, we would like to have the option of doing tricuspid clips separately, but with the reimbursement scenario the way it is, it's only an option when you're doing a simultaneous mitral clip that you can do a tricuspid. So we didn't want to walk away and then have to come back and not have the option of putting a tricuspid clip. So reevaluating the strike aspect, you can see the TR is still significant, but it was significantly improved compared to the prior. And this was a remarkable difference on table. Uh, knowing that she is relatively non-compliant and we didn't have much options on her otherwise, we didn't want to walk away. And, and you saw the bowing of the interior septum, so the jet is directed right towards our transeptal puncture. I didn't want her to be hypoxemic at that point. We let, left her with tricuspid uh, regurgitation going straight to that hole. So we decided to proceed with another clip down there. Uh, tricuspid clip is a little bit more challenging in terms of the anatomy and the imaging, uh, especially on TA guidance. But thankfully, with beautiful images here, we were able to get one clip between the anterior and the septal leaflet. And because of the existing hardware on the, um, on the RV side, you can see this nice lead there. We actually pretty much snared the, leaf, uh, the lead and got tangled in there. So in the process of trying to get really cute with our imaging and trying to get where we need to, uh, thankfully, Flora came to our rescue. We 
open up our clips and we were able to finally redeploy in a good spot, as you can see on the right side. This is the residual TR, which is significantly improved compared to prior. And the patient was then discharged on day three. Uh, she was seen subsequently in valve clinic, uh, post valve uh, clip employment. And she had significant improvement in her shortness of breath and her lower extremity edema, as well as fatigue. Uh, she's had one subsequent admission for volume overload, which was for about a day, and she was managed medically and is otherwise doing relatively well. Thank you. <laughs>